It's a commonplace among the Ajans that when you're meditating, you're getting practice in how to die well. So what are the skills you're going to need to die well? And how do you practice them while you meditate? I think of the Buddha's image of a fire going from one house to another. As he said, just as fire requires something to hold on to, in this case it's the wind. The mind requires something to hold on to as well, and it holds on to craving. And your cravings are going to determine where you go. Of course, if you don't hold on to craving at all, you don't have to go anywhere. But assuming that you're not there yet, how do you get control over your craving? Especially at a time when the body is weak. <coughs> and sometimes your mental faculties are impaired. This is what we're learning to do as we meditate, is how to compensate for weakness in the body, impairment in the mind. Think of that formula for right that mindfulness. Remaining focused on one thing, something that has nothing to do with sensuality, and putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. So you're trying to remember what is a good place to stay? And a good place to stay is right with the mind in and of itself, your awareness here in the present moment. So you've got the breath as your anchor. Of course, at that point, there will come a time when you have to let go of the breath, which is why it's good to learn how to stay with the mind. In fact, as you're working with the breath, as John Lee points out, you're not focused solely on the breath. You also have to keep one eye on the mind to make sure it doesn't wander off, and to make sure that it feels at ease with the breath. Remember what the Buddha taught about how the suffering that weighs the mind down is the unnecessary suffering we add to things. And how are you going to know that? Well, by watching the mind and seeing what are you doing that's weighing the mind down. So even though we're focused on the breath, we're here at the breath so we can see the mind. Look at the breath as a mirror for the mind. Keeps you anchored in the present moment. And anything that happens in the mind, it will show up in the breath. And so it's your way of getting to know your mind better. And then the other activity you're going to have to master is how to put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. Because that can get really strong, especially when you realize you've got to leave this body. Where are you going to go? Different worlds will appear to you, possibility of different identities that you could take on. And you want to get used to saying, no, 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 I don't want to go there. And to giving yourself good reasons for not going. In addition to the skill for learning how to turn off any inclination to go there. Because of the reasons will help. Because sometimes willpower gets weak. But if you've seen clearly the dangers of going to places like that, it's a lot easier to avoid them. A lot of people have mentioned to me that since the pandemic began and they've had a lot more time to themselves, past events have loomed much larger in their minds. There's not mo so much coming in in the present moment, and the mind has lots to feed on from the past, and it's easier for the past events to come up. And you suddenly find yourself wanting to go back and either 
enjoy something you missed from the past. Or to redo something that you handled pretty poorly in the past. You don't want either of those things to be coming up at the moment of death. There's that verse from the Buddha, not hankering after the future, not hankering after the past, seeing what's arising in the present moment and doing your duty right now. That's presented as a way of leading a an auspicious life, having an auspicious day, but it's also having an auspicious death. Because you think about the past, so many things that are in your mind about the past are not there anymore. If you were to go back, you wouldn't be able to find them. I remember thinking about this when I was in India, going to the different Buddhist holy spots. And you'd see these people whose lives were right there. They'd been born there. They lived there. They're probably going to die there. Yet they were no longer Buddhists, and they weren't getting much out of the spot. They may have, in a previous lifetime, wanted to be reborn at those spots out of faith. But then the spots have changed, and conditions have changed. The side around those spots has changed. So in their memories that you recall, you really like this particular pleasure, like this particular place, watch out. If thoughts like that come up, just learn how to say, no, no, can't go there. And then as for situations that you'd like to go back and handle in a different way, watch out for those too. Sometimes they involve getting back at somebody, or going, just going back to the situation, trying to rerun it. You can find yourself trapped in all kinds of unfortunate circumstances. So the skill of putting aside your distracting thoughts is an important skill in the meditation. All too often we want to get quickly past it so the mind can settle down. But the more you learn about the process of distraction while you're meditating, by learning to overcome it, then the easier it will be not to be deflected when the time comes to leave this body. So these are a couple of the skills you're going to need, and these are the skills we're working on right here. It's also good to keep in mind the Buddha's different analogies and similes for mindfulness. One is the man whose hair is on fire or his turban is on fire. You put it out right away. And he says you have to be mindful and relentless in doing that. So any unskillful thoughts that come up in the mind, you have to learn how to say no right away, have that same sense of urgency. These thoughts may seem innocent now. You could spend the rest of the hour having some pleasant reveries. But suppose that reverie were to take over your mind at the moment when your mind needs to be more alert and focused on what it's doing. You don't want that. So it learned how to develop the good habit now. And of course, there's the image of the quail wandering out of its territory. Make sure your mind stays in its territory. Stay away from thoughts of sensuality. There's the gatekeeper, knowing who to let in, who not to let in. A lot of thoughts that can come into the mind at that point, and you've got to be very careful about which ones you allow in. To have a clear sense of what's safe territory and what's not safe territory, 
and a strong sense of urgency. Because we don't know when death will come. And so it's good to get practice where you are, right here, right now. Now fortunately, these skills that you develop as you meditate are not good only for while you're dying. They're good right here, right now. So keep them in mind. And practice them every day, every day, every day. So they get firmly implanted in your mind. So at times when the body gets weak, you can't stay with the body anymore. It still has some good images, some good habits. That will see you through. <laughs>